and now it is a contrast. I think it's quite a contrast. Uh, the wine from uh, Germany, from Pfalz, um, coming from Reichsat von Bohl, which is uh, another super historical winery uh, going back to the 19th century and used to be one of the most expensive and prestigious wines in the world, costing more than Chateau Latour uh, or Lafitte uh, at the end of the 19th century. And now it's enjoying a fantastic revival under the directorship of uh, Richard Grosche, our friend from, uh, from Germany. And I have selected one of the Grand Cru's, or Grosses Gewex, Ungeheuer. Now, Ungeheuer, um, there are several Grand Cru's that people would say are maybe even more famous, like Fechstein in the same area. But I think Ungeheuer is very special. In a way, it's, the, for me, the most typical um, wine of that area. And uh, it is a historical uh, cru, but when in, back in history, it was three hectares extension, and now it's 29. Uh, so there is what we call the democratization of Grand Cru, so that everybody can have a little bit, uh, including your cousin and your, and your hairdresser. They all want to be uh, owners in the Grand Cru. Uh, but the real stuff is coming from this uh, little uh, parcel. So I think there's only... Uh, a few thousand bottles, Richard, right? Uh, three, four thousand bottles of this wine? Well, three hectares. Three hectares. It's a bit more. Um, again, large oak uh, aging. Uh, similar winemaking, actually, to, to Ostertag. It is a lar uh, large oak. Uh, no sugar. 0 0.7. Try to find a drier Riesling on this planet than this. Wow. Uh, but this is really now the style of Von Bull because they are going very much into this direction. Uh, bone dry wines for, for restaurants for fine food, um, but the, the expression is very different from Alsace, even though I think uh, Kraus Fly uh, is not so far from Münchberg, yeah? it's about, what, 15 kilometers or something, a bit more maybe, but really very uh, close because it's on the other side of the Rhine, it's the neighboring region, uh, even though we think, you know, one is France and the other is Germany, uh, but historically uh, a lot of connection. Uh, so the expression here, it's interesting because the wine is very young, 2016, but for me it's very open. It's not really tight, it's not really uh, reserved as many Rieslings are at this age. I get some, even some buttery notes um, of maturity, so good wine making because uh, uh, Mathieu Kaufmann, who is the enologist, is uh, preparing um, this wine well before bottling so there is no damp phase, there is not a problem. Everybody who goes to Germany knows that uh, the wines are served too young in the restaurants. Often it's impossible to buy an older vintage. It's now changing a little bit, but it used to be that you could only uh, drink 2017 in the restaurants now. It's a, it's a German disease. I call it the German disease. Austria is the same. I'm sorry for you guys. Uh, you need to put more wine aside uh, because it's nice to drink those wines with two or three years uh, of age.